Hello everybody, and we are back with our Wii 1.4 three cylinder Polo, still with an overheat condition. And yes, we have a comeback. Okay, did a video, uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago it is, and uh, the time that I post videos doesn't necessarily relate to the timeline of, you know, history. So, we did a thermostat on this uh, Volkswagen Polo uh, 1.4 three cylinder TDI common rail, and the customer complaint was an overheat condition. So, we tested everything and if you watch that video, I'll put a link in the description and came to the conclusion, yes, this thermostat doesn't appear to be opening now. It's pretty hard to test and we did put it in a pan of water and the pin seemed to be retracting, you know, maybe a wee bit too easily than I sort of liked, but it was a bit of a rubbish design, I thought. But anyway, it's now more intermittent than what it was. The customer is telling me, or the owner is telling me, that they took the car, uh, generally speaking, for driving about, it gets up the temperature and it seems to hold the temperature no problem. However, he took it on a, a long run down the motorway and the, the heat started to creep up the more than what they expected it to be. So I told him, for the meantime, stick your, your fans on and, uh, you know, it'll, it'll sort of help it. And it does help it. So it's back and we're into a variable where why is this only doing it, you know, now and again. In the most part, it's okay, but on a long run, when he's doing it for a long time, it starts to overheat again. So I did say in the previous video that this has a fairly complicated cooling system. It's actually got three cooling systems. So I'm gonna go into that a wee bit more and simplify it and break it down a bit better and uh, we'll see what's wrong with this and we'll get to the bottom of it have a fair idea what the problem is before you even start and you probably know yourself you say well if it's not the thermostat it's going to be the water pump so and yes you'd be right it is a water pump but this is an unusual water pump this car switches the mechanical water pump on and off it has that ability so it's for cold start and get to get the car up to temperature as quickly as possible to optimum temperature it actually turns the main water pump which is driven off the timing belt or the camshaft belt so doing the thermostat was the cheaper option and yes it has improved it slightly it seems but the condition remains albeit intermittent so in the previous video that we changed the thermostat, I showed the schematic of this cooling system and I described uh, you know, how complicated it is and it's pretty ridiculous and all. So I'm gonna break that down a wee bit further. It's maybe a wee bit more understandable. So you've basically three cooling systems. You have uh, a low temperature circuit, a main circuit and a heater circuit. So what I mean by that now is the main circuit, if you imagine that's the engine block and on that we'll have the water pump and there's our expansion tank and we'll have a main radiator at the front. So and we'll have a thermostat here. So the top pipe of the radiator is into there and the water pump bottom pipe then goes into there i think that's the way it goes and you have that coming out feeding into that and that has a return line on it going into there so that's the the main system which is the main engine cooling so that is a mechanical water pump which is driven off the cam belt so we'll have a heater matrix inside the car and 
it then has its own system. So that goes like that. I think that actually does the uh, EGR cooler as well. And that tees into the return line as well. So that has its own water pump, which is electrical or an auxiliary water pump. So AUX. Right, so that's a heater matrix. So that runs, whenever you start the car, that runs and puts through uh, warm water. And that gets that, there's, there's a, another wee complicated bit to it. That actually gets the, uh, the feed from a separate sort of jacket in the, in, the, in the head, which is very close down, it's very low down towards the, the cylinders. So anyway, uh, there's a third one there, which is the charge air pressure or boost air or intercooler if you want. Now some cars of this, these generation engines, this is actually up at the intake manifold, but uh, in this car it's just a, a normally a normal sort of intercooler. So we get that off there like that, and then that return that goes onto there. And that has an auxiliary water pump, which is pulse width controlled, and that's pulse width controlled. And uh, this one here is also controlled by the ECU because that is switchable. The ECU can switch that on and off. So, and that is controlled by the ECU, and that is controlled by the ECU. So, hope you can make that out. All right. So, what happens is then, um, you start the car, engine's cold. Uh, to get heat in the, in the interior of the cabin, if you call for heat, this runs pretty much at 100% duty cycle. Whenever the car gets up to temperature and main cooling is required, this will reduce down to about 30%. Judy single, this one, and the ECU will switch this water pump on to circulate uh, through the radiator. So whenever I change the thermostat, we had no circulation. So if your thermostat was closed now, you don't get the circulation. So the other variable is that it isn't switching the water pump on. Now, whenever I did that thermostat, I better actually control this water pump and I heard it clicking but it was probably just the solenoid I heard clicking this water pump runs on the it's like a hydraulic action from the coolant itself there's a diaphragm in it that's sort of offset and moves about like that and actually is able to suck the coolant up into you know a wee small hydraulic circuit inside the water pump and then there's a solenoid that just opens and closes like a wee valve, if you want. And that uh, puts a shield around the impeller and takes it away whenever the ECU commands it, depending on, you know, the coolant temperature, clearly, you know. So it is a complex system. And test and flow back uh, is a bit of a nightmare. And testing to see why these pipes are blocked or anything is also a bit of a nightmare because these three systems can run independently of each other and it does that by having non-return valves all over the place so there's non-return valves everywhere and sometimes they're pretty hard to detect so we'll show you a couple of non-return valves so there's an arrow on that pipe there and uh, that's off the EGR cooler. So if we feel that, we can feel it. It's, it's hard in the middle there. There's a, like a blockage nearly. And if we come down to this pipe here, there's no markings in it at all. But if we pinch the pipe here with my finger and thumb, it's, uh, you, know, you, can, you can pinch it and then you come up here and it's solid. So you may be able to see that on camera 
that there is actually, you can sort of maybe see it there. There's actually something in there, but there's no markings at all. So that's another non return valve. So we changed the thermostat in this because of the lack of circulation. And whenever we did that, it did seem to improve it. But uh, it may be because this water pump was acting up, switching on and off. Now, you could get no circulation with an ordinary type non-switchable pump if your impeller has uh, uh, came apart from the you know the the drive if there's no drive in the impeller so that's, that's another variable this car however has 50 odd thousand miles on it and i wouldn't expect that to be the case uh with such a low mileage so that's the thermostat there that we replaced so the cheaper option and the easier option was to do the thermostat because Here's what you have to do to change the water pump. I'll just show you a wee clip of that now. So we're built off and uh, this job is actually about changing the water pump. Although we are going to put a new belt on, but we're going to reuse the tensioner and reuse that top pulley. But I recommend if you're doing a 10 belt job, you, you change everything. Water pump, that and that. So this car has about 50,000 miles on. But the reason why we're doing this is to change the water pump. So three triple square bolts, I've them removed and I just let her, I just pulled her off and I just let her drip. So it wasn't stuck on uh, or anything, which is a bit unusual. Uh, it just wiggled off with my hand. So what I'm gonna show you now is there's a wire on the back of that water pump. So that water pump won't just come off. And there's a wire down here and you can see of the intake tube removed and that connector goes onto the back of the water pump. So I'm going to just unclip that and then that'll release the water pump. On this particular one, the wire is at the back. So I've had to take the intake tube off in the air box, right? which is a bit of a pain. On the 1.6s and the 2 litres, depending on your engine, that wire is actually at the front here. So uh, it's a lot more accessible and you don't have to go into the back side of it. Breaking news! News just in, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you some more information and that's what this channel is all about, is sharing information. So I'm in the middle of uh, shooting a video uh, about how to take off this time belt, how to change this time belt, but it's, it's really to, to pull this water pump off and have a look at it. So I'm going to show you uh, a couple of comments. This is an original video about the overheat and where we changed the thermostat in this car uh, originally. So there's a few comments here, if I can scroll down the comments, and I'll get you into focus there. Great info, Dave. Uh, you hardly had a pint of milk there or something. Uh, that's the best what about you yet. Oh, and the video's okay, all right, okay. Dead on, Colm, <laughs> there's Jeremy, and the Reverend Jum says, too much, what about you? All right, okay, what did I say? Or, sure that's the best bit, Reverend. Okay, Reverend, I know you're a man on the cloth, but uh, you know, you need to lean it a wee bit. So anyway, EP82 Chris. So I take it your name is Chris, Chris, and uh, did this car come back out of interest? Pretty common for the water pump to be the issue in these. Diverter shield sticks intermittently. There is even a VW tech note. I replaced one today for this issue. Oh yeah, right. There we are now. Uh, yep, doing it now, Chris. Video comes soon. So that was nine hours ago, and that's when I sort of started this job. Uh, I haven't taken nine hours to do it, but I've, I've just done it over a couple of days. So a couple of hours ago then, he replies back, nice job. Good to see your honesty too. I work in taxis, mostly Skodos on this issue. Unbelievable common on the two litres and the 1.6 VAG engines. So much so we have stopped using the pumps with the diverters in there. Keep up the good work, man. There we go. Unbelievably common. Oh, I, Chris, needs to be shared. This is an hour ago, uh, 57 minutes ago. 
Uh, obviously, whenever you see this video, the timeline will have changed. You'll not see this video for a lot of days, maybe even a week or something. So he replies back, do you want a copy of the tech note, buddy? And I replied back with the email address. So unbelievably common, and they've stopped using the pumps with a verbal valve. Well, that's what I'm going to be doing as well. So uh, if we get that tech note through from Chris there, I'll uh, we'll add that on the end of the video and see what it says. So I think I've found the problem. This is the offending article, the water pump with this electrical connection. This is uh, the solenoid that turns this pump on and off. So this is uh, known as the diverter plate. And what that does is that pops back. So the water pump can, uh, whenever the computer turns the water pump on. So this is stuck in the on position. So there's the impeller spinning. So the water pump's working in a normal manner. And uh, yeah, it's not creating any flow because the impeller is closed off. So what to do? There's a couple of things we could do here. Um, well, we've already decided what we're gonna do, but so there's the part number, 04B121011 with a D on it. And uh, what we'll have here is a wee note to say the original is a D and SS uh, superseded to a G. So they have uh, changed these as they went along, but uh, as far as I know, Volkswagen still are supplying this still. But in the aftermarket, uh, we'll bring this one in, and this is the one we're gonna put on. So that mechanism isn't there, and it's just got an impeller. All the aftermarket ones that I can find have a metal impeller as opposed to a plastic one. And where the solenoid goes in, it's just blanked off there. So you don't have that sort of pipe there. So the way this works is it actually works with the coolant. The coolant is uh, allowed to enter in here. And uh, so it creates a, it's like a hydraulic mechanism. And then this solenoid switches that on and off and allows that to return in. So there's a few uh, sprayma things in there and a few other things in this mechanism. So we may try and see if we can get this actually. So one uh, other thing you, you could do, although I don't really recommend that, is you just basically cut this plate off. So you, you run a grinder around there and, and take that sleeve off and uh, pop it back in again. But what we're gonna do here is we're gonna remove this solenoid with that wee torque screw and swap that over onto there. The solenoid is gonna do nothing, but it'll keep the ECU happy because if that was disconnected, it would flag a, flag a fault. So that's what we're gonna do. And uh, there we are. Yeah, that's the problem. Now there is another variable in this. I know, although I was happy enough that it didn't affect this car. The Gulf Mark 7s and that this sort of era of TDI, sometimes they have a bag of silica granules in the expansion tank. Now sometimes it says on the expansion tank, mit silica or something along those lines. So there's, there's a bag inside it, it's about that size there, about two inches by two inches, and it's full of silica granules. So what Volkswagen are saying is because the cooling system in these cars is managed, they don't want they uh, they don't want any sort of formation on the sensors, which would give the car the engine management a false sort of reading. So they're putting additional silicate or silica in the coolant because they're saying the modern coolant, the G thirteen coolant, hasn't got enough silica in it. So they're also saying because of the aluminium components and, and all that are, this prevents a buildup of uh, sort of residue around the aluminium and the, and the sensors. So they put this additional silica in it and you can see, you, you, you take the cap off and you can look in and you can see it sort of sloshing about. So 
When I got this car first, the first thing I did was look to see if there was a Celica bag in it. And I was happy enough there wasn't. Sometimes it says on the bottle, mit Silica or with Silica. So what has been happening? I haven't, uh, fortunately, I haven't came across it yet. But I know about it and it's worth keeping in the back of your mind if you get these cooling issues with these these cars. That bag can burst and if the granules get mixed in with the coolant, it turns into like a gel and it blocks everything up. And the first sign of that is it blocks the heater matrix and you know you have no heat. And if you put a new heater matrix in it and you don't do like a full flush uh you know the new the new matrix is blocked up again now so much so that volkswagen actually sell a flushing machine and it's very expensive it's thousands of pounds and it's a whole four hour process or something like that to do a full flush back and forth so an ordinary hose pipe and stuff like that sort of doesn't do it and it's a disaster to try and get that stuff out of here uh because of the the smaller diameter pipes that there are and the you know the radiators and the matrix itself and the EGR coolers and the intake coolers and all that sort of stuff. So my advice to you is if you have a silica bag in your expansion tank, take it out and have a wee look inside and you'll see it. You'll see it sort of over the side and it's about two inches by two inches square bag. And uh it's it's just just floating about in there. It's not uh, secured in there in, in any way. And you get a pair of long nose pliers or something and pull it out and throw it away. And uh, then you won't have that problem. So I've, I've also heard that these switchable water pumps uh, get stuck in the closed position because of that gelling up of the coolant. So it's another variable to keep in mind. And I don't know why you knew about that, but... Uh, that's, a, that's another thing with these uh, very complex cooling systems. So our new non-switchable water pump, permanently on water pump, is in. And took it for a wee run there. And the top pipe is nice and warm. So we can see it there on the old thermal. There's the top pipe, top of the radiator. So there we go. You can hold it from here just and see it. So, yeah, good job. As mentioned earlier in the video, a subs we're in the middle of changing this water pump and a subscriber popped up in the chat for the original overheat thermostat video and he says, uh, there's a tech bulletin for this. And I says, I'll send it on. And very kindly, he immediately did what he said. Now, this is good information from the subscribers. The whole idea of these YouTube channels, my YouTube channel anyway, is to share information. But, and good information. Now, the other time you get comments and no, oh, I caught a bent off this here, no, I don't like this, and that's dead on, you do what you like. But this is proper data. And thank you very much, Chris. You did exactly what you said you were gonna do. And they are, they're good people out there, you know. So, this is probably copyrighted. So he sent it from his phone, look, it's a screenshot. And uh, so that's all them black marks there. So it, it doesn't say who it came from or uh, you know where the information came from, but it's yours now. So let me see, you're going to, you can read this yourself. The coolant warning, temperature warning light illuminates. The coolant lever warning light illuminates. Engine temperature warning messages appear in the display. Right, this particular car had none of that. Uh, so, okay. Some cars have a temperature sensor on the EGR cooler, and that's uh, what throws the, the uh, engine management light. This car, I don't think I'll ever do that because the EGR cooler is on the auxiliary circuit, uh, and it does not have a temperature gauge in the radiator. It just has one in the... Uh, in the engine so it wasn't maybe getting bad enough perhaps but anyway because it is sort of still winter it's march time and this is occurring so maybe in the summertime i don't know so 
Symptom, the coolant temperature warning light illuminates, that didn't happen. Coolant level warning light illuminates, that didn't happen. Engine temperature warning lights messages appear on the display. Okay, none of those symptoms. The symptom is the car overheats. Uh, cause faulty fuel pump. Solution, check for leaks. And it just says, go ahead and change the coolant pump. Now, it doesn't say in this what cars this is applicable to. This is all I have. But uh, this is what he sent me anyway. And uh, out of pure gratitude for that, uh, we're going to share this. Remove the coolant pump. Check the coolant pump control valve, which is the wee solenoid that I was waffling on about. You can see on top of the coolant pump. Uh, if the control valve is seized, renew the coolant pump. So that must be referring to the, the diverter sleeve that goes over it. So top it up and bleed it. And time, two hours and 50. You will not do that in two hours and 50. Well, I can't anyway. Uh, it took me about five hours to do that, maybe. So there you go, proper data, uh, good information. Many thanks to Chris. So this water pump that we took out of the car, it's in the closed position because the shield uh, is covering the impeller. So if we look at a few pictures of what it's supposed to look like, we can see the shield is retracted and uh, they're pretty much that's the way it's supposed to be there. So, okay. So this water pump is switched off. So we'll just have a wee look. See, I've taken the solenoid out and put it onto the, onto the replacement water pump. And uh, we'll just stick a wee bit of air into that and see if we can get this to chitch. So if I have a closer look at this, we can see this wee by here goes down and there's a hole where the solenoid goes and there's another wee hole there and there's a chamber there as you can see so as i said the wee diaphragm sucks in the coolant and creates a, a wee mini hydraulic circuit so we're going to see if we can get this to uh, so with part with so if we put a wee bit of pressure, so this is just for a giggle here, you know. Mm. So if we put a bit of pressure in, it's trying to close. So it's just not returning at all. And that is not moving. Not, not moving back away anyway, or returning. So we're going to give it a wee bit of encouragement here. See what happens. There we go. So it does move. Now we'll see what happens next. Yeah, it's definitely sticky. So there you go. There's how that works. That's uh, how that switches on and off. Then. So yeah, mad on it. So there we are. Hopefully, that's uh, a wee bit more on these. Uh, elaborate cooling systems and how you can switch a mechanical pump on and off so uh, I had a wee look on the YouTube there and I didn't see really any there's not much information about this sort of carry on and uh, well, it's starting to free up a wee bit more 
Aha! 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 Oh, that, no, that. It was a turn itself there. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 Maybe give that a wee bit of a score to WD-40. Right, we'll give it a bath. Of our favourite panther chase. Is there anybody... That's not going to make any difference, is it? Not really. It's still sticky. Right, well, there's nearly how it's supposed to operate. You know what it is, you know, the plastic impeller is just too close to that shield, I think. Well, there we go. That's how it's supposed to work. So, anyway, hopefully, uh, give you a wee bit more understanding of what's going on with some of these VAG vehicles and uh, oh Christ if I can get that in the hole there mm -hmm. why did I do this bench test I think I have enough to do there you go fixed well there's a non switchable water pump in the car now and uh, yeah the owner did have a wee look at the old dreaded forums, you know. And there was some guy on that had replaced his water pump three times. And, uh, well, he didn't replace it, you know. He, was just, he just got it replaced, maybe under warranty or whatever. And uh, that's why the owner elected to do what he did and just do away with this uh, mechanism. And uh, you won't notice any difference at all regarding the, the heating of the car, in my opinion, because uh, as far as he's concerned, the heater circuit will heat his car up just as, as, as quickly uh, as, it, as it always did, because, uh, as I said, the, the systems run independently of each other, because of all the non-return valves. So there you go. Uh, Anybody want to buy a water pump? Okay, I think that's it. Thanks very much for watching, and uh, hopefully you got something out of that. And uh, all the best, as ever, and bye-bye. One last chitch. Oh!